New York State Assemblywoman Diana Richardson had made a speech about a year ago about the opioid epidemic versus the crack cocaine epidemic that happened in the black community. Now, what she's speaking about in this speech is about a bill that is supposed to appropriate funds to fight the opioid epidemic. But the clip that I'm going to show you, she's calling out the hypocrisy of the handling of the opioid epidemic versus the crack cocaine epidemic. I also want to speak on the fact, Mr. Speaker, that there's racial disparities here. When there was a drug issue in the African American community, we were prosecuted, we were put in jail, children were put in foster care, families were ripped apart, it was treated like a criminal justice issue. We had Rockefeller drug laws, our jails were filled with men and women that looked just like me and people from the 43rd Assembly District. But now, we have an opiate issue. It is affecting another demographic, and now it is a health issue. And now we have to put money into uh, diverting individuals from prison into treatment. And so what is missing from this package is a restorative justice package for all those individuals that were jailed and for all those families that were ripped apart and for the individuals who have criminal records because they had addiction Ms. issues, Ms. just, like the, issues, how, just uh, like the people Ms. who are Richardson, suffering. How do you so with that, I vote in the affirmative, but Thank more you. needs to be done here. Thank you. So you heard what this sister had to say, and it is the truth 100%. You can't deviate, you can't deflect, you can't deny, because this is what they like to do. And then because they can't argue this truth, they will come and say, well, I mean, but the people need help. You can't just focus in the past. It's never accepting of what they did to us. Now, Gary Webb, always remember his name. This gentleman, a white journalist, exposed the CIA and the government dropping the cocaine into the black community. And he lost his life because of it. He had three bullet holes in his head, but they said it was a suicide. Okay. There's a movie about him called Kill the Messenger if you would like to watch that. This man was a real journalist. But I remember what crack cocaine has done to the black community in the 80s and part of the 90s. I remember how people would go from working a job to becoming a crackhead, even being willing to rob their own mother or father to get this drug. Very, very sad. You've seen women who were nice looking women go down on this drug, prostituting themselves out on this drug. It was everywhere. If people weren't using it, they were selling it. They made a lot of money real quick because in a lot of the areas in the black communities, they don't have the opportunity for jobs. They don't want to hire black people like that. So a lot of people turn to illegal activity to make money. And that was the quickest way you could make a lot of money at that time period. I remember the very first time that I knew someone that dealt drugs and he showed me a wad of cash I've never seen in my life. I mean, I was like, that's all hundreds. I was freaking out to see that. And he said, man, you know, you get like me, man, I can show you how to do this and you can make this money too. But I did not take that route. I had brothers and a family that looked out for me and wouldn't let me go down that route. Cause I always said that, you know, if I'm going to make money, I don't want to look over my shoulder. I want to do things the right way. And I had a brother that was one of the OGs say, you better not catch me out there doing that. Cause he gonna have a problem with me and someone I respect. But I remember the scene of despair. I remember seeing them crooked police coming out there and there's always them white police too. I ain't see black ones, them white ones. They sit up there, rough up drug dealers, steal their money, steal their drug from them and actually don't even arrest them a lot of times. Beating them up, 
They would be sitting up there trying to fool with the women that's prostituting. Them cops are dirty. Or they want to arrest, they plant dirty guns, or they plant drugs on people. I've seen the worst of the worst of these police. With these video cameras and stuff you're seeing now, like you've seen the Michael Slager thing, you shoot the brother in the back and they plant the, the situation with the gun and taser. That was going on all the time in the black community. You just now you have cameras and social media to expose what they're doing. You seen 12 running up in houses all the time. You seen undercovers. You knew there was undercover out there all the time in, in your neighborhood. So, and nobody said these people need treatment. No one said, Oh my God, we just feel so horrible for those black people. No, no police say, you know, listen, come over to the police station and you can stay in the jail cell and you can detox. Cause I seen one special on MSNBC where the cops are saying that I seen another special that actually had detectives going door to door, checking on these people using meth and heroin, fentanyl, checking on them, making sure they're okay. They got the police out here giving them Narcan so they don't overdose on themselves and kill themselves. Now, when it was black people, you had a crack rock, you had a crack pipe, any kind of drug paraphernalia, you're selling drugs, whatever, or if you know somebody who sells drugs and you're around them, they round all you up and you go into jail, period. They won't hear no talk about that. Um, treatment, treatment, you're criminals. Three strikes law, Clinton. Lock them up. They created the biggest plantation field ever is in the criminal justice system and the 13th amendment backs that up where it's legal to keep them enslaved. A person who was a drug user have one crack rock and now he getting 10, 20, 30 years cause he got a crack rock in his pocket. It just depends on the judge. But these Caucasians with this meth, heroin and fentanyl, they're not getting no jail time. They need treatment. So when people tell us in the black community who's in my age group that actually saw what crack cocaine did to our community and how the media and how the police and how the politicians treated us, why in the hell are we going to have any sympathy for those who are doing this now? I don't want to hear them talk about no treatment. I want to hear them talk about these jail sentences because that's how they treated black people. And what this sister is saying is you going to give medical treatment to this group of people, but the people that's in jail right now for crack cocaine and they had possibly in the eighties or nineties or whatever, why aren't you getting them out of jail? Why aren't you helping them get back into society so they can get a job and be productive members of society and get back with their families? They tore families apart. They didn't care about that. They took kids out, as the sister said, of homes and threw them in foster care. But when it comes to these other group of people, oh, we can't break up families. These kids need their families. That's why it, it, it pisses people like myself off. You see the difference. You see how they treat you based on color not action. You had these idiots running around in Tennessee today talking about a white lives matter rally. Can't stand these people. You can't even come up with your own stuff. You always gotta be stealing from black people, but you say you can't stand us. But white lives matter started July 4th, 1776. And white lives matter has not stopped. And this is a clear cut case of white lives matter period. White lives matter because we're going to save them or at least attempt to save them, but we're going to save them from jail. We're going to save them from ruining their lives. But when it came to the black people, let's lock them up. Three strikes. You out. So when you hear people just saying, no, I don't care about that. That's why I saw what crack cocaine did. I had a family member to actually two family members that got on it. They both went to jail, both of them. They didn't say nothing to them about treatment. They didn't say anything about giving them a second chance. They went to jail. They went to prison. And because of that drug doing damage on my aunt, 
she isn't here with us anymore. She got off the drugs, but the drug did it damage to her health. And she was one of f fun people to be around. She was a person that just tell it like it is. And it was one of my favorites and she isn't here anymore. But what if she was Caucasian? She probably would have got a treatment plan. They probably would have had sympathy for my aunt, but because she's the wrong color, she was the wrong color and she got jailed and not a second chance and she isn't here anymore. That's the life we have to live here in America. And then the people who are part of white lives matter, they don't want you talking about it. They don't want you saying anything about it. Shh. Why are you bringing up race? Because you constantly putting race in our face. You constantly treating us different because of it. Kind of have to address that. Don't you think? Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share the video on your social media platforms. So that way you can inform people about what the new story of the day is. Like the commentary and also subscribe to the channel. Um, also click the bell. Without clicking the bell, you will not get a notification of when we upload our latest commentary.